Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Status, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome to my 5-minute review playlist. Today, we'll talk about a mnemonic for laryngomalacia. A problem in my larynx, in my supraglottic area. My esophagus has an omega shape. Most of these kids will be okay before their second birthday. But in some rare cases where there is apnea and hypoxia, it's time for surgical correction. So without further ado, let's get started. If you want more videos about ENT, ear, nose, throat disease, or otorhinolaryngology, check out my pulmonology playlist here on YouTube. Here is my lovely larynx, hyoid bone, and then a membrane, and then thyroid cartilage, and then a membrane, and then cricoid cartilage. Seen from behind, here is the epiglottis, which covers your larynx during swallowing so that food doesn't end up in your lungs. After this, we have false vocal folds, followed by true vocal cord, and then we continue the larynx, then the trachea, etc. Epiglottis is here, between the false and the true vocal folds, there is the glottis. Underneath, we have subglottis. Where's the problem in laryngomalacia? Here, in the supraglottic area. Laryngomalacia is a congenital anomaly. It's a problem in my laryngeal cartilage, which increases the laxity, making my larynx more prone to collapse. Which part of your larynx? Supraglottic area. During inspiration or during expiration? It's during inspiration or inhalation. I get what? Airway obstruction. My doctor can hear strider during inspiration. And, well, I'm in the supine position. But during expiration, I'm more likely to be okay. During the prone position, I'm more likely to be okay. That's why Tommy needs some tummy time. Mommy knows that when Tommy has these problems, it's time to put Tommy on his tummy and Tommy improves. This is classic laryngomalacia, a classic description for the case on your exam question. Diagnosis, you can go with the old school direct laryngoscopy, even better, flexible fiber optic laryngoscopy. What would I see? You'd see collapse here in the supraglottic area. And what's in the supraglottic area? The epiglottis. You'll see an omega-shaped epiglottis during inspiration. Treatment. Most cases are self-limiting. 90% of these children will improve. Everything will be fine by their second birthday. But in the unlikely event of apnea, hypoxia, pulmonary hypertension, or if they do not improve, it's time for surgical correction known as supraglotto. Plus T. And now to the laryngomalacia mnemonic. It's the O mnemonic. The O in laryngomalacia. It's a congenital anomaly. That's another O here. What's going on? Collapse of the supraglottic structures during inspiration. When I'm trying to get the oxygen into my body. Therefore, you will hear this strider during inspiration. When the baby is in the supine position. But if you flip the baby over to the prone position, then everything is okay and you do not hear a strider. And that's why Tommy needs some tummy time. This is classical laryngomalacia. By the way, there is no fever. Unlike the emergency of acute epiglottitis, which usually does have fever. Diagnosis of laryngomalacia, flexible fiber optic laryngoscopy. If you're old school, go with direct laryngoscopy. What will I see, medicosis? You will see an omega-shaped epiglottis. It looks like this because of the congenital anomaly. And then treatment, most babies will be fine by their second birthday, so it's okay. However, if there is hypoxia, then it's time for an operation known as supraglottoplasty. There is a video on my YouTube channel in the pulmonology playlist called Flow Volume Loops. Let's review them. Just remember that inhalation is downstairs, but expiration is upstairs. It's a weird curve, I know. And as you breathe in, <gasps> we're going from here to here, from low volume in my chest, <gasps> I end up with high volume in my chest. But in expiration, <sighs> I go from high volume to low volume. This is the normal curve. Here's the normal graph. Please pause and review. If you have any problems with these, check out my flow volume loops video. This is obstructive lung disease. Why? Because obstructive lung disease, I have problem 
during inspiration and expiration, of course, but mainly, mainly it's an expiratory problem. That's why the problem will be here, upstairs during expiration. Look at the difference between the big humongous normal graph versus the obstructed graph. Conversely, in restrictive lung disease, I cannot get the air in. So the problem is during inspiration. That's why the main problem is with the graph downstairs, the inhalation graph. How about if I have fixed upper airway obstruction, like a tumor? Well, a tumor doesn't care whether it's inspiration or expiration. That's why you're affected during inhalation and you are plummeted during expiration as well. But hey, medicosis, what if I have laryngomalacia? Well, you have problem during inspiration and expiration, but mainly during inspiration. That's why you are plummeted more during inspiration. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. If you want to put them all in one picture, they look like this. And oh, it is beautiful. Hey, medicosis, I always get obstructive and restrictive lung disease mixed together on the exam using these graphs. Okay, here is a mnemonic. Ready? Let's go. With restrictive lung disease, you are shifted to the right. Just look at this. Look at the normal graph, which is the black color. And look at the restrictive, which is the blue color. You have been shifted to the right. Restrictive to the right so that you can answer the question in one second without thinking. In case you have an amoeba for a brain. Quiz time. Here's the first question. Which of the following graph represents a patient with a phrenic nerve injury? Question number two. What is graph A, graph B, C, D and graph E represent clinically speaking? Question three. Which of these patients suffer from laryngomalacia? Oh, by the way, the choices are color coded. Even after this, I will have a lovely soul in the comment section asking, Hey, medicosis, can you please post the answer for question three? Goodness gracious. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course. Learn about antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications. Asthma is an obstructive lung disease. To learn about the treatment of asthma and COPD, check out my Utacoids Pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. More mnemonics are available in my playlist called Mnemonics. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Or you can click on the thanks button under the video. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.